Timing is everything. And in this example, what I want to do is show you how easy it is to take two separate tracks, heavy rock guitar tracks, like in this example, and we're going to sync them up, lock them into tempo a lot tighter. Now they're already recorded okay, but they're a little bit free feel. And this also works, keep in mind, as an insert, as a plugin in your session, or in, as a standalone, like I'm using here in Melodyne 4. Now I've imported two tracks. I've got to, I've got a rock track here. We'll pan that one a little bit to the right, and a strum track. I'll pan that one just a little bit to the left. Let's take a listen. <laughs> All right, now the first thing you wanna do is after you either record or import your tracks, what I like to do is see them in my workspace here. I'm gonna select the icon like this and this is going to give me my rock guitar. Now what you're looking at is polyphonic. It is a polyphonic instrument, but it's also giving you a lot of extra information, a lot of overtones that have been analyzed as potential notes here which I didn't play, I know I didn't play. That's because Melodyne is really just doing its job. It's using its default detection engine to make this more of a cohesive visual to what we're sonically hearing. And let's uh, bring in the other guitar, the strum track. Okay, so let's see them both. And to do that, I'm gonna hold my key, uh, command key and bring them both into my workspace. Now this is a lot of information, but we're talking about timing now. So one trick I like to do here in this example is I'm gonna select my rock guitar track, come up to algorithm, okay, as not polyphonic, as melodic. So choose melodic and then choose redetect. Now you do not have to do this, but it helps me. It really simplifies my visual and helps me see the, the timing that I'm sonically hearing. And I'm gonna do the same now for my strum track. All right, here's my strum track, algorithm, melodic. So it's gonna make it a more compact visual. It doesn't change it sonically. It just helps me see it in a more linear fashion. All right, now let's bring them both into the note editor window again, and you'll see it's not as extraneous. Here's just the meat and potatoes, all right? And let's play them together. Now, what you want to do is decide which track is going to be your anchor track. You can, you can time them together or time one to another track. I'm gonna select just my rock guitar track. I like the, rhythm, the timing of this one, it's pretty good. If you did wanna change it, you can simply open your timing macro and you can adjust it to taste. For example, use any one of these reference guides, uh, auto or a reference track, okay? But what we're gonna do here is time my strum track, this one, to my hard rock track. So I'm gonna change the icon to, to my hard rock track as gray and leave the strum track as orange. This means the gray value notes are only able to see in here, but I can't edit them. Now with just the strum track in the orange energy blobs, let's go back to where my loop marker is. I'm gonna open the timing macro again. And again, under track, I'm gonna choose my rock guitar track. Now as I slide the intensity slider, you'll see the notes shifting a little bit. Do you see that? What they're doing is they're matching the timing, the transient attack to the rock guitar. And if you pay attention up in the track view up here, you'll see it also moving too, see that? Now you can do this back in real time. While I've got the audio looped, play the audio, and while it's looping, you can adjust the timing to taste. Choose any value percentage you want. So in this example, I won't do that, although it's completely possible. Let me say, choose 81%. And when you're ready, just simply hit okay and you committed your timing. That's how easy it is. Now, again, you don't have to reconsolidate your view from polyphonic to monophonic like, like I did, but hopefully you can see the value in doing that beforehand. It doesn't change the audio at all, just how you're visually seeing the chords in this performance. 
And of course, what I always say is the best way is to try this for yourself, to dive right in and get busy, stay creative and have fun. Thanks for watching.